You're about to watch the best hunt of my life. So our hunt in Trempolo County is now continuing. We're on day three of our four day hunt on Dirk at Gary's Lease. So I've got this special stand that I really like to hunt because it's right on the edge of some really good bedding. Dirk and Gary gave it some weird name like Rumpelstiltskin or something like that. I don't know, it's really weird. But anyways, I really like this spot. So I wanted to get back in this stand on this third day of the hunt. So the morning started off pretty slow and then at about nine o'clock, that's when some activity started to pick up. So I hear this noise coming from back behind me out of Big Valley. And I look over and there's a doe and she's got a little fawn with her. Now her behavior was definitely showing some signs that she was an estrus. She was getting chased by this little buck that was right after her. A Couple moments later, I heard some antlers crashing together. Some big bucks were fighting. No more than a minute later and I see some antlers coming through the trees. Now this little basket aid, I had seen him the night before, so I was pretty accustomed to that size of antler deer that had been chasing does at this point, but I had no idea what was about to happen next. I just had a giant buck. I had a giant buck come up the hill from the same spot where that doe came from and where that younger buck was just at. And he walked yards from the tree and I had I had him and I grunt stopped him and he jumped forward right as I was about to shoot I mean I totally missed him my whole body is shaking like crazy so this hunt already started on at a pretty exciting note but that was just the beginning of what was going to happen. I had this small buck that was moving right down in front of me. And then just a few moments after that, I hear some chasing coming through the woods. I decided to not even try and stop that buck because he wasn't quite what I was looking for and he had a busted G2 on his one side. So after that buck made his way through chasing after that doe, I heard some more noise right out in front of me and it's a nice buck making his way right up to the point.
I mean, as you sell film hunters know, you're just in this frantic frenzy trying to get everything together, and man, it just doesn't happen sometimes. But at this point, I know for certain that I have missed both of these deer, so I'm going to keep on hunting, and I'm going to try to see if something else could happen, because the deer were moving like crazy. Not long after that, I heard some noise coming down from the bowl, and I looked over, and I could see another deer, and this one was a big buck. Now the first thing I noticed about this buck is that he was hobbling around like he was hurt or something and he had this really cool split G2 on his one side and he had a kicker coming off of the other side so he had some really neat character big mature heavy deer it was really hard to get footage of him because it was just so thick. After I was thinking about it a little bit more that deer was hobbling around maybe he just got his butt kicked in that fight that I had heard earlier so that would mean there's an even bigger boy running around in the woods yet. I see some flashes of antlers coming from off to my left, about 35 yards out. And so I grab my bow, I get ready, and I try to grunt stop him. As I was trying to get that buck to stop, he just kept right on a going, and so my window of opportunity was getting narrower and narrower. So by the end of it, I was literally kneeling on the platform of my stand, trying to get this buck to stop and still get a shot off at him. So then that little basket eight that came in first, he comes up the hill from the bowl, and he's just wandering around a little bit, and then he starts to head back down towards the bowl, and all of a sudden, his demeanor changes. He gets a little bit sheepish, like the big man is in town. And that is when my camera battery died. Honestly, at this point, I didn't really care. I just pushed my camera arm off to the side, got situated for my shot, drew back, and touched off. Well, I just shot that monster, <laughs> literally, in the last 10 seconds. My camera died. Set it at 12 minutes of battery life left, but it just died. You know, I was doing so much filming this morning, but you know what? I don't even care because I just shot a monster deer. Now, the shot was not perfect. It was back. And his angle was he was quartering away a little bit so it, my arrow would have tucked up in a little bit better. Literally in those final moments as I saw him there, I was like, he's mine. I, I just had full confidence. And I had to kind of sneak around and try to get an opening. I don't think I hit any branches. I may have just rushed the shot a little bit. So I'm gonna give it probably another half hour here of waiting. And um, sneak down, take a look at the arrow. 
You can see there's white hair. The angle was really steep, right there. So it's a really sharp angle. But I hit, I hit center body, but it came out low. But there's decent blood on this thing. So, man, I'm hoping that this is a, a dead deer. So I'm at the spot where I shot at that second buck and I found my arrow. You know, it was one that went way over his back. But I'll show you here, it wedged into a tree really good. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it out. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's stuck in there really good. I don't know. I got a little bit better feeling after looking at the arrow, but I'm gonna go talk to the guys. So I headed back to the cabin. When you're in a hunting camp, like, Story time is one of the most fun parts of the hunt. I mean, I won't make you listen to the whole story over again, but I did have a couple highlights from the time of telling the story that I wanted to let you guys have some fun watching. This is literally the best hunt I've ever had in my life. He came up right up on that knob right out in front of me about 25 yards. And so I... That you think I saw? And I Jerry think saw? it was the one that you saw. Because he's, he's a nice... Big deer with Probably shorter. a four-year-old deer. Yeah, you know? that's what I thought. He's got good mass. He's, he's good this mass. He's pretty wide. He's, his tines aren't real long, but he's yeah. just a yeah. solid deer. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, boy, I'm going to yeah. shoot him. So I drew back. <laughs> and, and I mean, I had to kind of fight to get an opening. So I'm doing this kind of thing. And I, he was No, he was right, uh, right on the knob, right, uh, right straight out yeah. in front of my stand. Yeah. You know, there were some beds out there, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, anyways, I, I drew back. And I'm trying to find an opening. I find an opening. I'm like, oh, right on him. I put it right behind the shoulder, center chest, because I just had my 20-yard pin, so I raised it up just a little bit. Put it center chest, shot my arrow, goes <laughs> right like this. Hits a tree right behind it. What? And I looked down. My sight had got bumped to 50 yards. Oh. <laughs> and I just about I just about lost it. I was like, oh. are you kidding me? Two times? Uh, I, had, I only had two more arrows left at this point. Like somebody else I know. I know. You sound like it's, your old man. It's, no. a good thing, it's a good thing I wasn't him because I had only had three arrows with me anyways. <laughs> yeah, I would only had three arrows. So, so I, uh, so I, I. Good thing you weren't elk hunting. <laughs> when there's a hot doe. Oh, it yeah, was, well, that's it, was from it was going over. Uh, for a Northwoods, Big Woods guy going and seeing this, it was. In it the was, southern part of Wisconsin. Yeah. There you go. Unreal. I've never experienced anything like this. This doe comes running out skirts right down the trail runs 12 yards and i'm like it's gonna happen yeah. so i'm on my third arrow at this point <laughs> yeah. or maybe i was on my second i don't you remember if i was you missed twice you missed the other well, well i missed it but i don't remember if they i don't remember yeah, the sequence right. so which one happened first because okay. it was just a blur okay. you, so you another one then? no 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 <laughs> so 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 you this sure buck, you want this recorded <laughs> yeah I'm, I, yeah yeah that's a good yeah. <laughs> so he comes up this this buck comes up the hill. She's she was scent checking the whole time. She, you know, sniffing around. I think she knew something was a little bit up. She's peering all those arrows whacking. Oh yeah, and she stood and yeah. she sniffed the arrow that I shot. <laughs> she came and sniffed the arrow that I shot. So <laughs> it was it was unreal. So 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 then he she steps up a little bit up the hill and he pops out and then and then I turn my camera on him. And I got on him, and I mean, he's a big ten. Fifteen yards, the same same spot that I shot that shot at that other buck. Okay, did what? Did you have so, your sights set on fifty this time? I had, I didn't have my sights on fifty this time, no. <laughs> and I put the pin right on him, shot. I think it was just a touch back, but I hit him center center body, and then the arrow, it's got it's it's like a pink white blood, which wouldn't that be? Was lungs. That, that's lungs. lungs. Long shot. But yeah. but the okay. angle was so because you know how yeah. steep yeah. that hill is, it came out was and broad it broadside or was he? He was actually quartering just a touch, touch away. Oh, um, so, okay. so, so I, I went down right like this, right into him. Should be good. And it came out and it was white down on the, so some white fur came blowing yeah. out on the bottom side. But, yeah. Yeah. but I know I, he's. Steep and you're up high in that tree, Had you seen so. him before? No. No, no, no. no. No, he, and I mean, he, I'll have to show you the footage. Did you, but what he did is, you hear then after you shot? What did he, he tore See, I didn't hear him crash. That was okay. the only thing. So and which I, direction did he go? He went straight down the hill, straight down into the into the bowl, bowl, into the bowl, in the bowl. into okay. the bowl, straight down into the bowl. Actually, that's a good sign, I think, because I think it, you know a lot of deer go in there to bed and just hang, and so yeah. if he's dead, he might have, he might have just went in there and hung out because yeah. no intrusion, nothing there. Yep. You know. Headed in to go track it. So we got to the site of where I shot that buck. Right away, man, that blood trail looked really good and we're thinking man this is going to be a 100 yard track job all of a sudden the blood just starts to disappear 
And we finally found another speck of blood. The blood picked up a little bit from that point on. We kept going and going and going. And I tracked it out on my phone. By the time we got to the edge of the neighbor's property, we had gone 800 yards. And so we decided to regroup, go back to the cabin and call the neighbors to see if we could actually go and track this deer on their land. And they gave us the permission to do so, which was nice of them and we're thankful for that. We were faced with a little bit of a dilemma. The weather forecast was calling for solid rain that entire night. Definitely wash out the blood trail. You know, ideally in a situation like this, you just let the bucks sit overnight and go in on that track job the next day and hopefully find him in his first bed. We decided that we had to get after that deer. We knew at this point that he had not bedded down yet. And the hope was that it was a liver shot and that he would be in his first bed and we would find him expired. So with about an hour or two of daylight left, me and my dad went back out into the woods and we finally found another speck of blood and that gave us another direction to go in. So we kept going and we started finding a little bit more blood and then eventually this deer went right down into a little creek bottom, popped up the other side and that's when we found the very first bed. Moved a couple feet further, and there was another bed. Once we kicked that buck up, things become a lot more difficult to try to track that deer. So we had no other choice. We had to keep tracking because it would be a lost cause the next day without any sort of blood trail. Man, it was getting tough. We tracked him about a mile. At this point, it's starting to get dark. We're on our hands and knees with flashlights looking around, trying to find anything that we possibly can. And man, I mean, it was 30, 40, 50 yards in between specks of blood. It was just becoming a reality that this was not going to happen. And we just decided that it uh, wasn't meant to be. We felt very good about the effort that we put out there trying to recover this animal. So even though this hunt ended on a negative note, I want to remember it for what it really was. The best hunt I've ever had. I'm ready for another one.